This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 2.1. We're going to be looking at properties of radical functions, specifically the square root. And the domain for square root is x is greater than or equal to 0, and the range is y is greater than or equal to 0. Invariant points occur where y equals 0 or 1. So here's an example. We have y is equal to x, and we have y is equal to square root x. And we notice that at y equals 0 and y equals 1, they intersect. So all we have to do is look at our function and look at where y equals 0 or 1, and we know they will intersect at these points. Okay, let's look at some other points. If x equals a quarter, then square root x equals square root one quarter equals one half. Now, one quarter is less than square root one quarter because square root one quarter equals a half, so that's bigger. So if we test more points, we'll find that for all x between zero and one, x is less than square root x. Therefore, between 0 and 1 for x, we plot square root x above x. Now, if we look at x equals 4, then square root of x equals square root of 4 equals 2. And 4 is greater than square root 4 because it equals 2. And if we test more values, we'll find that for all x greater than 1, we have x is greater than square root x. This means we plot square root x below x. And if we look at this graph, for every x above 1, we find that square root x is below x. And if we look between 0 and 1, we find that square root x is above x. We find that this is true no matter what f of x we choose, and, and we're plotting square root f of x. So here's some examples. If f of x is a quadratic or a cubic or any function, we can plot that. We know that they will intersect at 1. And in this case, we're not plotting square root x, we're plotting square root f of x. So it's no longer the case where x is between 0 and 1. We're looking at where f of x is between 0 and 1. So we know that intersects here, we know it intersects here. The domain for square root f of x is f of x is greater than 0. Here we have f of x is less than 0, so that's not part of the domain. And we know between 0 and 1 we plot above and above 1, we plot below f of x. Okay, so this is square root f of x. And same thing on this side. We plot above between 0 and 1 for f of x. And we plot below for f of x is greater than 1. So again, this is square root f of x. If we look at a cubic, it doesn't, still doesn't matter. We look for the zeros and ones where they intersect. Again, we plot above, below, and above. Here, for this point, we want to exaggerate the answer a bit to show that it is above f of x. So there won't be marks deducted if you just exaggerate a bit. And here we have above and below. So this is square root f of x. The properties of square root apply to all even roots. So if we had uh, the fourth root or the sixth root, you use the same strategy. The property of odd roots are slightly different. And we really only consider the cube root for this chapter. And the domain is x is all reals. 
because we can take the cube root of negative numbers. And the range is all reals, but it depends on the radicand, which is f of x. Invariant points, uh, we have the same, y is equal to 0 or 1, but we have another one, negative 1. Okay, so here's an example. We have 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, we plot above, as we did before, and below. Above and below. Now, below the x-axis, it's slightly different. It's the opposite. We plot below and then above because it's a reflection. Below and above. Okay, I think we have all our zeros and ones and negative ones. Above, below, above. And here we go below. And we stay below, and we go above and below. Below and above. Cube root f of x. Cube root f of x. Here we have y. Our range is all reals. Because this goes to infinity, this goes to negative infinity. Here... Our range is slightly different. As I said, it depends on the radicand. Y is greater than whatever this value is down here. We're doing it graphically, so we don't, we don't actually specify a value. But if you were doing it algebraically, you would specify the value. So here are the general rules again. For all f of x between negative 1 and 0, we have f of x is greater than square root f of x. Okay, between negative 1 and 0, f of x is greater than the cube root of f of x. And this means between negative 1 and 0, we plot the cube root of f of x below f of x. And for all f of x less than negative 1, f of x is less than the cube root of f of x. This means that for f of x is less than negative 1, we plot the cube root of f of x above f of x. If we're just sketching, this is how you sketch. If you want to plot more accurately, please use a table of values. For the square root of f of x, to find the domain, you need to solve f of x is greater than 0. And this means that you need to solve quadratic or cubic inequality. From pre-calc 11, uh, you've done quadratic inequalities. And you can use test points, or you can just reason it out using outer intervals and inner intervals. For example, uh, y is equal to the square root of x squared plus 4. Let's consider the discriminant. We have b squared minus 4ac. So this is 0 minus 16 because we have a is 1, b is 0, and c is 4. There's no solutions. In this case, there are no intervals excluded. Because this is positive, so it opens upwards, so we know it's above the x-axis. Domain is x is all reals, and our range 
is y is greater than the minimum value. What is the minimum value? Well, this happens to be in vertex form. So we know the minimum value is 4, but we need to take the square root of it. So this is greater than or equal to square root 4, which is greater than or equal to 2. And if you don't see the vertex form, y is equal to x minus 0 squared plus 4. So the vertex is at 0, 4. Next example, negative square root of x squared minus 9. We have x squared minus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. And we factor this as x plus 3. x minus 3 is greater than 0. We have a positive a. So this is our outer intervals. It looks like that. So we know that the outer interval is greater than zero. So our domain is the absolute value of x greater than or equal to three. Our range is y is less than or equal to zero. Normally square root goes up, but we have a negative sign, so it means it's going down, so our range is less than zero. y is equal to square root of 4 minus x squared. So we need 4 minus x squared greater than 0. This is x squared minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. So we have x plus 2, x minus 2 is less than 0. We have a positive a. a is 1. So the only points that can be below 0 are in the inner interval. So our domain is the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 2. Our range requires a bit more work. We have 0 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to square root q, which is from our vertex. Again, our vertex is negative 4, but this is inverted. So it's 4. So we have 0 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 2. Okay, tips for graphing calculators. This will make your life a little bit easier. Let's bring up calculator. You set y1 equal to f of x. You set y2 is equal to the square root of f of x. So we go graph. We have 2x minus 4. And we have square root y1 and draw. So that's a quick way to get both graphs up and exit. Let's change the function 0.5x plus 3 and we already have that so we can go ahead and just draw. You can see how quickly we get the graphs. One more. x squared plus x minus 2. Draw. And the last tip for graphing without the calculator. You know how to plot lines, quadratics, and cubics. So plot them first and then just use the graphing rules from the beginning. And that completes this lesson.